Hi, I'm Rob Howell from Comcast. We have some very interesting 10G demonstrations to share with you today. What I want to talk about first, though, is how we set these demonstrations up. We're actually feeding three of these demonstrations from a production virtual CMTS in our office south of Denver, 80 kilometers away by fiber. That's important because what we're showing you is very close to a production configuration of how some of this 10G technology would work. So what we have for you is two demonstrations of full duplex DOCSIS technology and a third demonstration that integrates DOCSIS technology with PON technology. On the first demonstration, we have the first ever FDX full duplex RPD node from our partners at Harmonic. The purpose of this demonstration is to show the maximum downstream and upstream speeds that this technology uh, can be made to do to serve customers in an environment that's built as 10G. What we've seen in our uh, demonstrations and what we're showing here today is speeds that achieve up to 8, 8.5 gigabits per second in the downstream and up to 5 gigabits per second in the upstream. This has been implemented with uh, modems, prototype modems from our partners at Broadcom over an HFC plant that's uh, sitting underneath the table here and again delivered over an 80 kilometer fiber link from our virtual CMTS south of Denver that's connected by fiber into the facility here at Cable Labs. And the fiber technology that that terminates is inside of these nodes right here. So again, this is a demonstration of a near production version of 10G FDX with a near production version of a virtual CMTS, hardware configured as production, software configured as production, and a prototype node delivering speeds that 10G promises uh, for our customers in the future. In the second demonstration, we're also using 10G FDX technology, but instead of supporting the maximum speed of a single modem, we're actually deploying the FDX bandwidth across two modems. As you can see in the diagram, we've allocated some of the FDX spectrum to one modem and another portion of the FDX spectrum to another modem. They're used in a complementary fashion such that one modem has two downstream and one upstream, and the other has one downstream and two upstream, and in the non-FDX band, they share that spectrum. If you look at the spectrum in the diagram, that's a snapshot in time of how the, how the uh, modems would use the bandwidth. But over time, those different blocks of bandwidth could be, could be implemented dynamically, depending on which modem needed the bandwidth at the time. This is an example where there's just two modems. In actual production environments, there would be hundreds of modems that would be scheduled and implemented to have blocks of spectrum allocated to them at time when they, needed, when they needed that amount of spectrum to operate. In this case, what we're showing is the same amount of FDX bandwidth that we saw, or FDX capacity that we saw in demonstration one. The total in the downstream matches the total in the downstream in the prior demonstration, and the total in the upstream matches the total upstream in the prior demonstration. What's different here is it's being shared amongst the two modems, as you can see in the bottom dials on the diagram. If you add the downstream of modem one and the downstream of modem two, you can see that it aggregates to the, to the total. And if you add the upstream of modem one and the upstream of modem two, you can see that it aggregates to the total, such that all of the FDX bandwidth is being used. It's all being used simultaneously. It's being shared by two different modems, and both the upstream and downstream are on at the same time in the FDX band for the entire FDX bandwidth. Before I get into demonstration number three, a quick comment about the demonstrations we just showed on 10G FDX. Each of those demonstrations was implemented over an N plus zero HFC plan as the FDX requirements uh, were written. Going forward, Comcast has determined it will also implement FDX over an N plus X environment. That comprises a large portion of our plant, and we like all of our customers to have our multi-gigabit symmetric services. So as part of our plan going forward, Comcast is in the process of developing FDX-capable amplifiers with partners from Broadcom and Comscope. We expect to see those amplifiers in our laboratories this year for testing in comparison to the modeling and analysis that we've done that makes us confident we'll deliver FDX services over M N plus X cascades up to N plus six, where we have HFC plant already built. I'm gonna move on to demonstration number three now. Just like demonstration number one, the connectivity to this fiber node is from our VCMTS facility in Denver, south of Denver, by the tech center area. 
And in that facility, we're running software, production software, on a production hardware configuration that supports FDX as we saw, but also supports the DOCSIS 3.1 components in this node and the LLT components in this node with a production software configuration for both of those as well. This is important because it allows us to synergize our DOCSIS last mile customers and our PON last mile customers on the same hardware platform as well as the same software platform and in this case, again, it's a production software platform. So in this demonstration, we're delivering two gigabit downstream and one gigabit upstream to a modem provisioned for those services, the XB8 modem shown here on this table. This is a service available today over DOCSIS 3.1 technology, which is widely deployed in our, in our systems today. We'll make this available to customers on a, on a business basis uh, to support multi-gigabit speeds where they're necessary, and it's the precursor to doing multi-gigabit symmetric speeds over FDX in the future. The second part of this demonstration, out of the same node, we'll take advantage of the PON technology in that node. The PON technology in our node is 10, big, 10 gigabit uh, EPON symmetrical. It's implemented by an SFP OLT plugged into a 10 gigabit ethernet switch inside of the node shown here on the table. Again, the value of this technology is now we have fiber of the home customers and Doxis customers in the same hardware platform, running off the same software platform, deliverable to either last mile. Furthermore, the 10G technology that we saw in the first demonstration could also be part of this node implementation instead of the DOCSIS 3.1 implementation. In that case, you would have a 10 gigabit EPON last mile adjacent to a 10 gigabit RPD module. So we could do multi gigabit symmetric speeds to both DOCSIS customers and fiber to the home customers out of the same node the same node hardware, and the same back-end software. Lastly, on the, last, on, on the edge of the network, where now we have a virtual core, an Ethernet switch fabric, and an edge network, today supported by Doxis or supported by a supporting a fiber to the home, we could also add other edge access technologies, such as wireless or Metro Ethernet. That's the vision of DAA coming to life. It was always been how we, implement, how we thought that DAA would be implemented over time. Today, Comcast and most cable operators are focused on DOCSIS services to our customers. But over time, we've started to add fiber to the home customers. And over time, we've started to implement wireless uh, last miles as well. All of those can now be serviced out of the common architecture that we refer to as DAA. And in this case, what you're seeing is they're serviced out of a single node platform supported by common hardware and common software. We believe this is a great way to synergize and converge different technologies in the last mile into a single platform to make efficient delivery of our services and cost-effective implementations for Comcast and speed of operations in the field to service these, uh, these technologies. Now for our fourth demonstration. We've mentioned in the past, and it's part of the 10G program in general, we talk a lot about speed a lot about bandwidth, those are key aspects of 10G. But the other three pillars of 10G are latency, security, and reliability. We view reliability as availability, being always on for the customer. And the Comcast build out of DAA and the build out of the path to 10G is going to take advantage of the technologies that we're using to increase our bandwidth and increase our speeds, but also to make the network smarter, more robust, more, res more resilient, and more highly available. This last platform is an example of that. We have built a platform now that goes in with every DAA installation that monitors all of our fiber connectivity of that, from that installation into the field 24 seven. It allows us to recognize when there's fiber cuts and act on them immediately, alarming the right field personnel to remediate and telling them exactly where to go for that remediation. We work on that in concert with other uh, technician tools that we have. For example, when we have a fiber cut, there'll be outages in nodes, there'll be customers that are down. Part of our technology is to combine all of that information and go to the source of the problem and fix it rather than have a whole lot of activity going on in the field that won't fix the problem. Prioritize the problem, in this case it would be a fiber cut, notify our customers what to expect when there's a fiber cut, and go remediate it as quickly as possible. Simone is going to demonstrate uh, the fiber device itself when there's a cut and the application that, that's served by it. On the screen here, we have all of the wavelengths available. 
in the current system that's built into that the test platform. And we're going to remove one of the fibers and watch the reaction of the application that technicians have to observe where that cut is. As you can see, we have a, a solid fiber link uh, as, the, as the application is telling us here. And we're going to ask Simone to go ahead and pull one of the fibers and see how the application reacts. So as you can see, and as anyone who has the tool can see, in particular technicians who are asked to remediate this, they can see now that the fiber cut has happened very nearby. This is obviously a test system, so the very nearby is extremely nearby. But you can see the wavelengths that are down because of the pulling of the fiber, the, the disconnectivity that occurred. In our back end, the intelligence is in place to say, this is the primary cause, message our customers accordingly, automate a ticket to the technician who has to go repair this fiber, get them out to repairing as quickly as possible to decrease our mean time to repair. So Modi's going to reconnect the fiber. This application exists in the cloud. Anyone with access to this application can see the remediation in place. As you can see, the service was restored. Pick up the XMF there. Simone has in his hands here uh, the handheld version of the same tool. So as technicians go and do their work and repair fibers uh, in situations like this, they also have access to a tool with them to, to validate that that work has been done. This tool has many other uh, functions as well. But this combination of tools is part of Comcast's commitment to not just build more bandwidth and more speed and better services, but also deliver a better customer experience by making sure the customer is on the most amount of time we can keep them on, and when there is an issue, we can address it immediately. Thanks, Simone. That's our demonstrations for today. We hope you found that insightful. 10G is a, a, an extremely exciting program at Comcast. As you can see, we're taking it uh, very seriously from several angles, the DOCSIS angle, the integration angle with our DAA platform, and the robustness angle with the tools we're putting in place and the technology we're putting in place to harden the network as we build it, make it smarter, give us unprecedented visibility, very granular visibility all the way through the network from the core down to the customer, integrate that into a database that allows us to deliver not just the best services, but the most robust services as well. Thank you.